Katowice warmly welcomed over 25,000 people during the 24th Conference of Parties to host the global negotiations on climate change. The pop-up hub you're seeing now uses natural materials that promote ecological construction. The space featured music, art, workshops, and lectures related to Dobry Klimat, or Good Climate, for the general public. Poland was proud to share its commitment to a black to green climate model, with a goal to move away from coal dependence and towards developing green surfaces. COP24 was vibrant to say the least. The opening plenary offered hope for a deep and just transition to climate justice. The IPCC's special report on 1.5 degrees revealed a sense of urgency and ambition to reach an agreement for climate action. And on the final night of negotiations, the Katowice Climate Package was adopted. As a student observer representing the College of St. Benedict, I researched gender-responsive actions for sustainable agriculture in the Global South. I saw gushing springs. I saw check dams filled with water. I saw rich fields that were being plowed by fat cows. I saw rich fields planted by trees. And I saw hillsides that were green, deep green forest. Was it an NGO? Was it a bank? Was it the world? No. It was leadership. Our global food systems are one of the largest contributors to global greenhouse emissions, but they are also the most vulnerable to disruption under increasing global temperatures. They also have the potential to mitigate emissions, promote social and gender equity, secure food sovereignty, and reduce poverty. Community-focused agriculture in the Global South had valuable considerations by addressing food security, but lacked the resources for research development and adoption of climate-smart technologies. International institutions are missing opportunities to align political goals and climate actions with the urgency for effective adaptation and mitigation for vulnerable communities. Some of the most interesting approaches to sustainable agriculture surrounded land use management techniques, which allow more autonomy to smallholder farmers than advancing technologies. I appreciated discussions on agroecological farming, which steward an ecosystem while sustaining local populations through strategies such as rotational grazing, agroforestry, and intercropping. Through my research, I recommend an approach to systemic change by securing a platform for local communities to take part in ongoing actions while strengthening and expanding joint work with the private sector. I also recommend developing opportunities for knowledge sharing between climate similar communities and boosting support for underrepresented voices to engage in research development. Science and policy would greatly benefit from a diversification of experiences and knowledge to promote equitable and sustainable development. These suggestions could be applied to local communities in the United States as well. The conference was intellectually stimulating and an invaluable opportunity as a student. I held the privilege of communicating with knowledgeable individuals with valuable insight on climate action. I was inspired to reclaim a role in local climate action, and I hope many others did as well.